you uh, you wrote an article recently that really hit home for me. It was called The Danger of Investing in the Big Picture. Um, and the reason it hit home for me is because I've pretty much convinced myself that I can use macroeconomic factors to predict the market, even though I know for sure that I can't actually do that. And you wrote an article about how you sort of fell to that trap too this year when in March you were looking at the coronavirus situation and you thought maybe it could get a lot worse than it had gotten. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what you found in that article in terms of what it takes for an investor to use macro type things like that to actually predict what the market's going to do and why many investors should probably stay away from that. You've got to be so right to be right. I, I, I think, I don't think my, um, I can't remember what the title was, but I know my initial working title was how half right can be entirely wrong. And that's what I was, right? I, I was half right. I mean, it was late March. This was the very bottom of the market, by the way. And I was smart enough not to sell stocks and market time that way and get into cash and then you never get back in and so forth. But I wasn't so smart as to just avoid temptation and walk away from the telephone and, you know, or email and not, not contact my brokerage firm. Um, and I said, well, you know, just because it seems to me things are, are going to are gonna be worse than they're predicting for the economy in, in terms of GDP growth and in terms of uh, unemployment. And I was looking at the consensus estimates and at that time they were like three or 4% down in the second, no, a little more than that maybe seven or 10%, 15% even down in the second quarter, but then a quick bounce back and so forth. And I thought that just didn't, it, it wasn't gonna work out like that. So I bought some put options on, on my portfolio, spent some money on put options to protect against further losses. Of course, that was the very bottom of the market, the puts expired worthless. I was right about GDP growth being, or GDP shrinkage being much worse than the consensus at the time. I was right that unemployment would be higher. I was right that this would linger longer in the economy. And my, and my put investment went to zero. So um, I think it's really, I, half right isn't bad. I mean, I was right on, on, on the big picture of the economics and I still lost the investment because I didn't factor in the other things. I didn't realize how aggressively the, the you know, Washington would respond with pumping money into the economy through the stimulus package and the, and the federal in the fed buying assets and and, and it, just the you know this kind of wash of asset flow that would support the marketplace um you've got to get it all right it seems like to to make money while investing macro and, and i knew that going into the trade right i'd written about this before but sometimes it's it's just so hard to avoid temptation you, know, you see that apple on the tree and you know what happens if you take a bite and it just looks so good. And I did the same thing. You know, it's, it's tempting when you think you see this once in a lifetime type thing. You know, and COVID is one of those things and, and you think, you know, may, are, I'm not going to do this all the time, but I'm going to do it this one time. And you know, that, that's sort of the trap I fell in this year. And what, what's interesting is even if I, and you talk about it in sort of a two-part decision, even if I gave you every fact about COVID it, before the whole thing happened and said, all right, you can invest in anything you want in the market, most people would have gotten that wrong. Because yep. even with all the terrible economic news, the right move was not to short the market. And so it just shows how difficult it really is to try to pull this off. Yeah, so you know, what was also doubly lowered me into temptation was two weeks before I made the trade or three weeks before I had, when it was, no, a month before, when the very first COVID news started coming out, I had this sense of, and I wrote, you know, I don't try to predict the markets, but I don't think this is going to be like a one week thing, this little, path, the very first jolt. I think this is going to be more serious than, the market is going to take this more seriously than, than people think. And the next three weeks, of course, stocks went straight down. And then I thought I was a genius, you know, and that's, a, that's the easiest way to lose money. And so, so it was, uh, it, it confirmed my false belief that I knew what I was doing. 